Okay, I've been relying on my Librarian Dreadnought and Rapid Ingress to get my Blood Angels quickly into the fray, but surely there's another way. So with that in mind, I want to try out some Death Company, and especially some Jump Pack ones. I found a great series of files by Caddy H11 that were called the Raging Black Marauders, and decided to supplement them with some great heads, links in the description. Here we have the Raging Black Marauders in Lychee, a nice range of decorative jump packs, power fists, even an old Corvus helmet. There are lots of power sword variants, but I really like the chain swords. There's also a range of torsos, some banners, lots of pauldrons, and a few thunder hammers. Then, lots of helmets, axes, bolters, bolt pistols, inferno pistols, everything has lots of decoration, blood drops, wings, crosses, and skulls. Perfect. Okay, everything printed great. I glued them together and gave them a blast of Chaos Black Primer. On to painting. A layer of Abaddon Black as a base, and then some Dark Reaper layer. Get some on the dry brush, a few swipes on the back of my thumb to shed the excess, and then some sweeps all over the armor and weapons and jump packs, catching all those nice acute edges, the raised areas, and the other distinct attributes. Then some gray sear base, this time applying a more frugal dry brush, catching the same edges, but only very lightly to accent that dark reaper. Breaking out the Mephiston red and a thin detail brush, carefully painting the crosses on the face plates, on the jump packs, on the armor and on the weapons, and on the blood droplet emblems. Screaming Skull! This gets added to all the skulls and bone emblems, on the parchment scrolls and on the various examples of things. Then some Caraberg Crimson, it's nice and watery, so when painted over the Mephiston Red, it settles around the edges and the depths and gets some nice shade. It really makes the droplet stand out by creating a cool, darker base that rises up and lightens the top of each droplet. The Sergeant Head. The screaming face with fangs out, distorted by the rigors of the Black Rage. Well, that gets a layer of white scar. Back to the Death Company, Seraphim Sepia Shade. Like with the Caraburn Crimson, it's nice and watery and goes over the areas of Screaming Skull. Settling in the eye sockets and teeth of the skulls, the details of the feathers and the wings, really giving them some excellent shade and definition. Then some white scar on the plasma pistols, where I want the glowing power effect on the cooling coils. Okay, the sergeant. I thought about more of a vampiric, deathly, pale, cadaverous look, like Overlord Damaskinos in Blade 2. So, to get that look, I tried out a light wash of null oil, but... Oh my gosh, does that suck? Yep, I agree, it just doesn't look right. So I caved and gave it a watered down wash of Seraphim Sepia Shade to get a little more human color in the skin. And then a little touch of extra white scar to accent the fangs and a light dry brush to get him a little less suntanned. The plasma pistols, the areas of white get a wash of Tesseract Green Glow, which settles in the troughs and gets a nice radiant effect on those cooling coils. On to the bases, a squirt of Elmer's glue and then wiped around with an old brush before sprinkling on some sand from Red Rocks, Nevada, where I occasionally go climbing. Once this is dry, oddly, Cadian flesh tone is ideal to mimic the color of the sand. So with the dry brush, heavier sweeps around the boots and then as the paint leaves the brush, more delicate swipes up the legs to get the appearance of dust and sand, kicked up by the marching or blazing across the sea desert landscape of Baal. And then off to a hiking boot box where a blast of varnish all over to lock in the sand and protect the paint. So, here we have a squad of Death Company Jump Pack Space Marines. Each of these Blood Angel Astartes has succumbed to the dreadful condition known as the Black Rage, and so have been inducted into this unique fighting force. When Sanguinius was slain by the traitor Horus during the Siege of Terror, the event echoed through the gene seed of every subsequent Blood Angel, and it can now consume them. 
catapulting them into the past where they are lost to those terrible events. Not only do they relive their Primarch's last moments, but they are touched by his power. The strength that allowed him to, after weeks of near non-stop brutal combat against the traitor forces and their never-born allies, to smite the bloodthirster Kabanda and then destroy the demon Primarch Angron and then duel his fallen brother Horus Lupercal. Possessed of superhuman strength and vitality, they are clad in black power armor, decorated with red crosses to symbolize Sanguinius's wounds, as well as other emblems of death, and are aimed into the enemy like living missiles. These Death Company Marines are equipped with chainsaws, pistols, and jump packs, so they can launch into the fray at reckless speed, there to hack and carve and blast the visions of Horus, thundering through them and ruling their every sense. Injuries go unnoticed in this state, and they fight with preternatural fury. The fortunate die in this manic assault. Those less blessed defeat their foes, and unable to escape their berserk estate, are given the Emperor's mercy by comrade and chaplain. duty to know and to make safe such knowledge for the good of the chapter. 